This is Stark Point Transmitting Station, a broadcast facility at Stark Point in Devon. It's owned by Arkiva and currently only transmits a single broadcast, BBC Radio 5 Live, on 693 kHz, but for how long? In 1935, after a string of openings of huge transmitter sites, the BBC started to look for locations to improve radio coverage in Devon, Dorset and Cornwall. After researching 23 sites and carrying out extensive testing, two sites were eventually selected, Stark Point in Devon and Clevedon in Somerset, with the latter having an interesting conception. Stark Point took over 1050kHz from Washford, which up until then had been broadcasting both the Welsh and West Regional programmes on separate wavelengths. However, Washford for the West Regional programme wasn't in an ideal position to cover the whole of the South West, so the station at Clevedon was also completed at the same time to serve the Bristol area and Somerset. The Stark Point station came on the air on the 14th of June 1939 using an ST&C Type C100 100kW transmitter on 1050kHz to broadcast the West of England regional programme. It was the last high power medium wave site to be built by the BBC before the outbreak of the Second World War. A directional aerial array was used to avoid wasting power over the English Channel and to enhance the signal to the east and west by creating a signal lobe. This was done at many sites including Ashton Moss in Manchester and if you'd like to find out more I'll leave a link below and at the end of this video. The original station consisted of two 137 metre or 449 feet stayed lattice masts, with one being a mast radiator and the other a parasitic reflector. Both masts had a break at 95.4 metres or 310 feet to allow for the insertion of the system's loading coil. The station got its power from two 11 kilovolt main feeders and a 400 kilowatt diesel alternator. The building design followed L. Rome Guthrie's earlier work at the spectacular Brookmans Park transmitting station. The BBC obtained copyright in the Brookmans Park elevation drawings and was able to follow them, with changes to allow for the building size for several other sites. The station at Stark Point, however, closed on the 1st of September 1939 in anticipation of the outbreak of war between Britain and Germany two days later. Listeners then had to retune to the much weaker signals from Washford for the home service. In October 1939, BBC research engineers experimented with horizontally polarised transmissions at Stark Point. The idea was to see if broadcasts could be made without providing enemy aircraft with a navigational radio beacon. A horizontal dipole antenna was suspended between the two masts and the test was reasonably successful and between the 18th of February and the 15th of September 1940 regular transmissions were carried in the evenings on 877 kHz of what became the forces program to the Allied Expeditionary Forces in France. After the fall of France, Start Point was redeployed back to 1050 kHz and broadcast the European service. This role continued until May 1944 when the transmitter was again shut down to allow work to convert it for a new job, transmitting the Allied Expeditionary Forces programme to the troops engaged in the Normandy landings. This also used a horizontally polarised antenna. The transmitter's power was increased to 180 kilowatts, but with a consequent increase in audio distortion. This required the four output stage water-cooled valves to be increased to eight by using the spares. Subsequently, other spare components were brought into service to avoid overheating. Upon the completion of setting up the higher powered transmitter, engineers on the site were told that it was in readiness for transmitting a forces programme to the second front. Start point was on standby for many weeks, closed down until D-Day, plus two when they had urgent priority messages to transmit on the forces programme. The functions of the mast radiators were swapped over. The south mast was used as the radiator and the north mast as the reflector, and this was to transmit across the channel into France. A Marconi SWB-18 shortwave transmitter was added to the station early on in the war to carry the home service on 6075 kHz from the 20th of January 1940. This was intended to provide coverage where the medium wave signals were poor and to provide an emergency backup to the landline distribution network in case of major disruption. 
This transmitter also carried the European service in Norwegian at certain times. In July 1945, when the new peacetime broadcasting framework was put in place, Start Point broadcast the West of England home service on 583 kHz until 1946 before moving to 977 kHz. In March 1950, Start Point moved once again to 1052 kHz. The home service became Radio 4 in 1967 and in 1978, 1053 kHz was redesignated to carry Radio 1. In 1980, Start Point acquired an additional medium wave transmitter when the initial post-1978 wavelength change arrangements for Radio 2 were modified and this new 50 kW transmission of Radio 2 began from there on 693 kHz. When Radio 1 medium wave was closed, the transmissions on 1053 at Start Point finally fell silent after the 23rd of November 1978. The transmitter remains on 693 kHz today, broadcasting Radio 5 Live. On the 12th of January 2016, one of the top stays of the northern mast at start point had snapped, the point of failure being the highest inline insulator on the stay. This caused the mast to lean towards the south. On the 21st of January 2016, the damaged northern mast was demolished. A new mast had been built to replace the demolished one, but until the new mast was finished, the West Prawl transmitter had been used instead. Despite a new mast and its spectacular location, the landmark start point station with its iconic twin towers is due to stop its transmissions. In May of 2022, cuts announced by the BBC's Director General Tim Davey included that BBC Radio 5 Live will stop broadcasting on AM meaning the service on 693 kHz from start point is set to close. Looking across from start point, half a mile into the distance, we can see another important piece of radio infrastructure. This is start point radar, used for monitoring the coast from its elevated location. Its radar monitors coastal movements and its array of cameras can focus on numerous locations at once. Just down the road from here is start point lighthouse, which was built in 1836 to protect shipping off start point. It's one of 29 towers designed by James Walker. The lighthouse is in the Gothic style, topped by a crenellated parapet. The main tower is built of tarred and white painted granite ashlar, with a cast iron lantern roofed in copper. The tower is 92 feet or 28 meters high, with two entrance porches on the north and south sides. The lighthouse originally had the keeper's living accommodation on the ground and first floors, but this was removed in 1871 when the new keeper's houses were built either side of the porches. In 1882 another cottage was built here, detached from the tower to the east. 
All three were designed by James Douglas, though the north and south dwellings were rebuilt in the mid-1950s. The lighthouse was powered by oil until 1959 when it was electrified. Work began on the automation of Start Point Lighthouse in August 1992. The station is now monitored and controlled by the Trinity House Operations Control Centre at Harwich in Essex via a telemetry link. In 2018, the rotating optic, which had been in use since 1959, was replaced by a two-tier LED lantern. Light alone was found to be inadequate at Start Point, so a foghorn was installed alongside. When required, the foghorn sounds once every 60 seconds from this gap in the side of the tower. So that's Start Point, another radio site that will ultimately fall silent in the near future and will likely be demolished.